Did a major pipeline hack lead to huge gas shortages in the Southeast? And what should you do if you're trying to safely store fuel? Hey there, I'm Ariane Day Till, and welcome to Verify, where we're fact-checking claims trending around the internet. This week, we're researching questions about the recent Colonial Pipeline hack and how it impacted gas distribution across the US. So first, let's recap what went down last week. The Colonial Pipeline, which transports roughly 45% of fuel consumed on the East Coast, announced on May 8th that they would be halting their operations after a ransomware attack from criminal hacking group Darkside forced the company to go offline. The several day outage and the media reports that followed caused many people to immediately panic buy fuel, leaving a number of gas stations empty and prompting others to hike their prices. But was the Colonial Pipeline hack the only reason for a gasoline shortage? Well, while many gas stations across the East Coast did experience a shortage, this claim needs a little context, since the shutdown of the Colonial Pipeline was only part of the reason why. An ongoing shortage in fuel tank drivers, a switch in seasonal fuel blends, and panic buying are all reasons why many are seeing high prices and long lines. Our sources for this are the Association for Convenience and Fuel Retailing, or NACS, the U.S. Energy Information Administration, as well as GasBuddy, an app and website that helps monitor fuel prices and savings. Jeff Leonard, who's VP of Strategic Initiatives for NACS, told the Verify team in an email, quote, technically what we are experiencing is not a shortage, but an issue related to distribution. Meaning the supply of fuel is unchanged, it's more how to get that fuel to the pumps in a timely manner. The NACS wrote in a May 12th update that even though the Colonial Pipeline has resumed operations, there can be more than a two week delay for fuel to move from Texas to New York. So shortages might continue through the end of the month before they get to returning to normal. Another factor contributing to the shortage is the time of year, because stations are switching from winter blend fuels to summer blend fuels, which are pricier because of a longer production process. And lastly, drivers stocking up on huge amounts of fuel, well, that's also a big reason for the shortage. In a May 9th blog post, GasBuddy said, panic buying or hoarding of gasoline will prolong outages and price spikes, making them much worse. So while the Colonial Pipeline did cause a temporary halt in gas distribution, we can verify that no, it was not the only reason for the gas shortage. Next up, we're fact-checking if the gas shortage is affecting only Republican-leaning states, like this Facebook post implies. We can verify that no, the pipeline isn't impacting Republican-leaning states. The whole pipeline covers approximately 5,500 miles between Texas and New Jersey. And while it does pass through reliably Republican states like Alabama and Mississippi, it also stretches to Democrat-leaning states and moderate states such as Maryland, Delaware, and New Jersey. The pipeline also crosses swing states such as Georgia and Pennsylvania. Now, right off the bat, we see some inaccuracies on the map itself. The map in the post skews electoral college results, with Georgia and Virginia both labeled as red, even though they were blue in the 2020 election. The map also lists six states as blue states that actually went for President Donald Trump in 2020. But it's not just the map's labels that are incorrect. Experts say politics didn't have anything to do with the shortage. Here's Ken Medlock, a senior director from the Baker Institute for Public Policy at Rice University. This has nothing to do with politics or red-blue designations. Patrick DeHaan, an analyst from GasBuddy, agrees. Areas served by the pipeline, regardless of what side of the aisle they're on, are, are encountering the same issues. There is not an outlying situation where I can say politics is behind outages or price. So we can verify that no, the impact of the Colonial Pipeline disruption was not felt by just red states. So clearly this hack and the following shutoff from Colonial Pipeline, well, they resulted in some madness at the pumps. You might have seen this video going around that allegedly showed a woman filling a plastic bag with gas. So is it related to the disruption? We can verify, no. This video was actually taken in 2019 and had nothing to do with the Colonial Pipeline cyber attack. The original video was posted by a man named Jason Ruddison in December of 2019, but recently resurfaced with social media users incorrectly claiming that that woman was reacting to the Colonial Pipeline cyber attack. Facebook has since labeled that video as false information. But regardless of when it happened, we can also verify that it's just not safe to use plastic bags like that to store gasoline. I mean, come on guys, we know better than this. And if you need some reinforcement, check this out. The US Consumer Product Safety Commission put it bluntly in this tweet, do not fill plastic bags with gasoline. Instead, only use containers approved for gasoline storage. That's what the commission said. 
Finally, let's look at another gas claim. This graphic claims that sugar will, quote, stabilize gasoline for long-term storage. So is that a thing? We can verify that no, sugar won't stabilize gas. While it is true that gas can degrade in fewer than 45 days, use only products specifically designed to stabilize fuel when storing it for longer periods of time. That's according to AAA. All right, that's all for Verify this week. I'm Ariane Daytil. If you have a question for our team, just text it to us at 202-410-8808. You can also check out our website and subscribe to our newsletter at verifythis.com. And shoot, while you're at it, follow us on social media at Verify This.